Welcome to the ZBN Podcast. This is January 1st, 2015. Not when you're listening to it, but when we're recording it. Um, it's a new year, new tradition. Uh, so this time, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, first of all, I'm Spiegel, your host. With me, as always, I have Hex. Hello, everyone. And Zyber is also here. Yo. And since we're, uh, we kind of got the core team back together, um, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And this is actually something I'm kind of stealing from Nintendo Voice Chat. Great podcast on IGN. Um, Are but, all of uh, your ideas stolen from Nintendo Voice Chat? Not all of them, just a good majority <laughs> of them. Hey, if anyone from this show is listening, um, we're, we're very uh, thankful for the, all Hi, the ideas Mom. you've given our show. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're, we're going to do a, sort of a, a get-to-know-you podcast. Not even a get-to-know-you podcast, but we're just going to talk about whatever. Because we talk so much about Nintendo and video games that we just kind of wanted to take a break to start the year and just kind of take a load off, talk about whatever we want to talk about. Unstructured, uh, this is as much structure as we'll really have, <clears throat> this this intro here. Because um, we've all done a lot of stuff over the past year we kind of want to talk about, and we'll pr- kind of just treat it like a free-form conversation. Believe it or not, we actually are capable of having real-life conversations. Um, um, even though Barely. Well, yeah. Barely. In fact, this is better than what I normally do right here. Like this, this is far beyond my my normal capacity. I mean, di- I mean, did you even do anything for New Year's Eve? Like, did you go out and like go to a party, anything like that? Um, no, it was kind of low key this year. Uh, there was a there was a sort of party I think that happened at my apartment, but I actually went to my parents' house. So we just ringed in the new year by trying year to by play Guardians of the Galaxy on my dad's Roku. But our internet connection at that house is so bad because it's like DSL, so we couldn't even get it to stream, so we just gave up. That's so 2005, man. I know, but there's no, like, we can't get Charter at the, they live in, like, the middle of nowhere, in the mountains, so there's no Charter service out there, so they have to use DSL. It's not like Courage the Cowardly Dog, is it? Not like, uh, you know? No, not quite like that. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's that's what I did. They're at the edge of nowhere. Yep, basically. I mean, it's actually not that far from here. It's only like 20 minutes, but, and I'm pretty close to like all the things I care about. So, so you're not yeah. that far from nowhere, really. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just yeah, isolated. It's, just it's like all country on the way there. So farms and cows and things like that. That sounds ex- like exactly where I live. Like you can drive like 20 minutes out of the city and then all of a sudden there's just nothing. Just about right. Yep. And, uh, Zyber, li- Zyber lives in the Midwest, so... Yeah, it's funny, because you'd probably just be at my place and think I am in the middle of nowhere. But I'm really not. Yeah, well, did you do anything for New Year's Eve, though? Yeah, I helped sponsor a youth group lock-in. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sponsor, as soon fun, as I heard the word sponsor, boring. it's like, ooh, fancy. Did you, uh, did you give them money, and then they paid for something? Some no. service? No, I was, uh... I'm a, uh... Not quite a leader, but like a... Assistant? Assistant leader. Yeah, something like that. I'm one of the college people that helps the high school youth group. Um, yeah. Uh, myself, I don't really do anything. I. It was funny, I had like these elaborate plans, like what if everyone came over to my house and we watched this concert for New Year's Eve, and then, well, yeah, us. you guys would have come. Um, and, and... So I invited everybody. I put an open invitation on Facebook. I didn't even invite specific people. I just said, look, if you want to do something on New Year's Eve with me, come over to my house. We'll watch this concert. It'll be fun. I'll have snacks and food, and we'll, like, you know, hang out, and we'll play games and stuff after the concert's over, countdown to the New Year. Uh, So nobody responded to me. Um, (laughs) I I had to actually invite individual people after that because nobody responded to my open invitation. Everyone said they were doing something except for one person and his girlfriend. Um, she didn't show up, and then he left after an hour. So it was actually just me in my house alone watching the <laughs> concert. And then afterwards, I played no, Earthbound. No QJ? Well, QJ was working. She oh, was at work. And she got back She got back to the house at like 10.30, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just go to bed. So we went to bed. It was like 11 o'clock. Didn't <laughs> you didn't care. even read I, in, I, huh? I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to do it. It was too depressing. So. Yeah, I, I don't find that open invitations ever work out, at least for me. Like, I'm not popular enough that people are like, ooh, this guy's inviting anybody I want to go. I have to specifically invite people and then badger them. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
But I had food. Well. I mean, is that not enough for people? Well, they probably have food. There are other places with food. I don't think I've ever thrown a successful party at my house. I was actually thinking of, uh, like, we should all do a Skype chat for when the new year comes in. But then I was like, wait, we're all in different time zones. So how is that going to work? Are we going to, like, do a different video <laughs> chat for every every single time zone that we live in? So it's like, oh, it's the East Coast one. Everybody call. And oh, it, now now the uh, West Coast has it. No, no, we have we have to start when it gets to Bryn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's, is... it's 4 o'clock. It's 4 o'clock over here. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. I can exactly. go to bed now. All the way to Spiegel's time. No, I think everyone was doing their own thing, so it wouldn't have worked out anyway. Yeah, all you jerks had plans on New Year's Eve. We'll do something else in a big video chat, like E3 next year. That would be or fun. This like we, year, we did, actually. I actually wanted to do another live reaction podcast at some point, because like, I always like doing them, and I don't know how people feel about them on this channel. Um, if you're listening to this show for the first time, by the way, this is not how we usually do it. Um, but we actually have, like, videos where we'll, we'll do reactions to the Nintendo Directs. Um, and it's, I think they're pretty interesting, like, because the reactions are very organic and we're kind of just talking about it as it goes. Yeah. No, um, I think they're fun. I mean, they certainly get the most views, but that might be just by virtue of the fact that the name of the, the event is in the uh, title. So just from an SEO standpoint, it gets more oh, yeah. views but yeah i i think it's fun to to watch other people do reactions to things like that so hopefully people like those and we're definitely going to keep doing it because they're fun to do well it's just fun to watch a group of nintendo directs or like it's fun to watch a nintendo direct with a group of your friends you know who are into the same things because as i found out last night at my new year's party which was not a party if your friends just aren't into the same things that you're not into that you're into just nothing's going to happen it's just going to yeah. be boring and you're going to be by yourself but well, yeah, this is a shining example of sh social ineptitude right here. Here we go. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we we're so socially inept. We started our own podcast just so we could uh, be around people who um who have the same interests as us. I was thinking the other day, uh, like I'm not a very outgoing person, but I'm also socially inept. And when a, when a socially inept person is outgoing, then they're just creepy, right? that's how that works i've had to tell i've had to tell myself down a lot if that's what you're implying <laughs> like i feel like if i tried to be outgoing i'd end up being some sort of creeper you'd be kind of like me really i mean I, i'm not really exaggerating i'm i'm fairly outgoing i just i don't like i don't really like people but like if, if i get a chance to host an event like i'll do it because i it's fun for me to kind of be the guy in charge yeah I don't like going to parties, but I like throwing my own, if that makes any sense. I like throwing parties if if all the other people are equally socially inept or or more so, because then I feel kind of normal. <laughs> I'd rather go to one just because then I can leave if I feel like it. Yeah, that's true. It's hard to do that when your party's at your house. Yeah, just but, leave your house like, yeah, hey, let, screw, let you, screw you guys, I'm out of here. Party. That'd no, be don't fun. break anything while I'm gone. Use the coasters. <laughs> I don't oh, think I've man. ever owned a coaster in my entire life. Like, every house I've ever been in, they're like, use the coasters. I'm like, where do you even buy coasters? You can just find pieces of paper. Fangamer.net. I've got these great coasters that are uh, styled in Mario Block. So, Mario Block there you go. coasters? Yeah. Got myself a brick block. I've got myself a question block. All then... coasters coast coasts. Uh -huh. So if coasters coast coasts... Wait... What am I saying? I, no, that's not how it I goes. Know. There's this, uh, there's this rather well-known uh, Philosoraptor image that says if people, if guns don't kill people, people kill people. Then do toasters not toast, 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 toast? <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. Oh man, we have fun here. Oh, the heat toasts it. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. Do you guys know? I'm sure I've done that before. You I have done that people who are listening right now who don't know. Uh, there's these two Wikipedia articles that I find especially amusing. One of them is uh, consecutive use of the word had, uh, and one of them is like buffalo, 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 like like nine times, and both of them are legitimate sentences when spoken. It's eight times. It's like John James while John had 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 a better effect on the teacher. It's so stupid. Oh, English language. 
So uh, bad. We should move to uh, ambiguity. Yep. I kind of wonder like who who bothers to put these Wikipedia articles together. Like who looks who looks <laughs> at Wikipedia and, who looks at Wikipedia and says, "Yeah, we need an article about uh, the seven different uses of the word buffalo in one sentence." <laughs> We really need that. Well, anyone can make one. I mean, yeah, but then it stands, like, it just stays up there because people are like, yeah, yeah, we could use that article. Those specific examples are, are kind of, like, well-known in English literature and teaching and education and whatnot, so I guess that's why they stay. Um, I think they are coined by, like, well-known linguistic professors or something like that. Um, how did we get on this topic? <laughs> See, this is the beauty of this this show, you know? Yes. I'm just kind of going. By the way, guys, uh, I know people like uh, resolutions, and they never work out, but uh, oh, you here guys we go. have any resolutions of your As own? in New Year resolutions? Yes. Or was it New course. Year's resolutions? Do we have this discussion already about the well, New Year yeah, versus New Year's? I posted Year's? In, the, uh, in the off-topic thread on the board, why Which people say Happy thread? New Year's. Why do people say Happy New Year's? It's only one year. It's Happy New Year. Oh, yeah, and then and Tim said something smart about, well, maybe they're celebrating all the years. <laughs> and but I in, was in like, Tim... no, that's nonsense. Don't try to be smart about this. Because it's short for New Year's Day. Yeah, I know. But then but then people don't put the apostrophe. Yeah, those people it's are because stupid. it's short for New Year's Day without the apostrophe. <laughs> Wait, why is it New Year's Day, though? With a, Is it a... Like, that doesn't even make sense. Who's celebrating, like, one day? Like, okay, it's New Year's Day. I don't know. Like, uh, nobody told me Happy New Year's Day today. They just said Happy New Year, if they said it at all, which most people don't talk to me. On so they, they are legitimately, like, celebrating the entirety of the concept of New Year's? It appears so. They just like <laughs> a new year. Hey. Oh, well, I, I guess I'll take that. But, yeah. My favorite new year was 2009. Was it? So my that was my personal favorite New Year. I have no recollection of any New Year except this one. Yeah, I don't. I mean, know. I know balls dropped and things like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> resolutions. Okay, yeah. Now that we're off the topic of um, <laughs> New Year's ball droppings, we can uh, move on to our resolutions. Um, you guys, uh, let's see. Okay, mine mine is actually pretty easy. I've just got just the one. Um, and it, it's, it kind of spurned from having no money to spend on video games and me being very upset about that and thinking, well, you know, if I stop spending so much money on fast food, I could probably like buy, you know, like if I go to a fast food restaurant, I spend like five bucks, right? And if I go two times a week, that's 10 bucks a week, which is a game, you know, GameStop for 10 bucks or, you know, two weeks, I could get a game I've been looking for. And, yeah. um, I mean, you can definitely th- yeah, save a lot so of money I, not buying So I'm food. definitely doing, I'm doing the no fast food this year, which is going to be an easier resolution than any of the ones I've done in the past, just because there's a true motivator behind it. I want more money to spend on games. Plus uh, you'll lose weight. Yeah, that's the side effect. Well, but I'm playing so many games, I'll probably gain weight anyway. You don't Sometimes gain weight by playing games. <laughs> no, you know, but you gain weight by sitting around the house. And Yeah, uh, well, but if you weren't playing games, you'd be sitting around the house doing other things. Yeah, that's true. I'd just be... Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll probably lose some weight. Probably, uh, I'll probably spend more money than anyway, just because Surge, I'll, I'll be like, Surgeon oh, I'm General's saving... warning on the box of a video game. Video game. You might get heart disease playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. How about you, Zyber? Huh? Any resolutions? He's not paying attention again. Oh, don't I'm paying you do attention. That. I was laughing at what you just last said. Oh. <laughs> well, resolutions. One of my resolutions is to try to run more in the morning since I don't have non-clock classes every day this semester. Because my sister has been getting me to run for the past three years. And it'd be great to not only one, uh, run once a week prior to the 5K she brings me to. That's good. I've never been a fitness ever kind of guy. That 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 sentence did not come out as I intended. I've never been a fitness kind of guy. Um, I've never tried being in shape. Um, it's kind of an anomaly that I ever lost weight over the past, like near the end of this year. But then I gained it all back because of all the Christmas eating and holiday eating that I ended up doing. And I went to a wedding, wedding. and there was a lot of food at the wedding. I, Filipinos liked eating. Uh, I don't know how many people know that, but we eat a lot. Hey, 
Hey, uh, Hex, I got news for you. Everybody likes eating. No, you this don't understand. America. You don't understand. This is exceptional how much we like eating. Tell me about how much you like eating. Um, well, everybody prepares, like, something for holidays, and we always... Wait, this is, this is normal for anybody, but, like, you, I always end up taking some home. We had so much food that we couldn't fit it all in the fridge, and then we went to this wedding, and there was catering... And uh, we ate all that. It was supposed to be the dinner. Then it was like after party, let's go all to to my uncle's house and we'll eat even more stuff that he cooked. I was like, why did you cook? You knew that you were going to be eating dinner at the wedding reception, and so we ended up having so much food. It was like an avalanche of food. It was ridiculous. Um, it was like a party ball from Smash times a thousand. Yes, with chocolate fountains inside and things like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, fitness is good. Um, I actually got a pair of like running pants for when it's cold for Christmas, so maybe that'll motivate me to actually use them. Well, you're not going to go like running in them. You're probably just going to like sit around the house. And <laughs> That's the what first I'm thing I've done with them. I, I've only worn them as like pajama bottoms, basically. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's not doing anything yet, but no, that's that's good. Um, I have a lot of, I don't want to call them resolutions because I feel like that'll like doom me to not fulfill them. That is correct. Um, but something that I've been planning to do uh, is start featuring actual content on my YouTube channel. Um, oh, nice. Which I, I made a brief video about it on my YouTube channel, what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but I was kind of vague. So maybe I'll outline some specifics. Like I want to make more Smash Four style art of people, or people's requests, uh, and other popular uh, people that didn't get in, like King K Rule or something like that. Hey, uh, like real that. quick, why why don't you uh, plug your YouTube channel for everyone to hear? Oh well, I mean, there's not much there. There's two videos. One of them is the uh, Klonoa Smash Four. Uh, quote unquote leak that I made that I tried to pass off as real on on game facts. That pretty much is your YouTube channel. <laughs> and um, yeah, the the channel is Artsy Omni, which is what I go by on anything I sign up after like 2010. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. There's nothing there, so it's not very interesting. But I still have 90 subscribers somehow. <laughs> That Klonoa thing is super impressive, it dude. Is. That, that's why. It is popular. I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's impressive. But, um, it's like the opposite of my YouTube channel. What is your YouTube channel? Uh, well, it's just a bunch of really crappy um, Let's Plays, and we have like seven subscribers, which are just all of our friends. <laughs> yeah, that's how, my, uh, that's how my Let's Play channel was. It was just our friends on Facebook that actually watched it. We got yeah, the occasional hello. comment from a stranger, but it wasn't very frequent. Although right now I'm trying, we're trying to do a let's play of Hero Warriors. It's mm. kind of entertaining, and I'm definitely gonna to try to edit them instead of just do it as it is this time. Yeah, definitely the the magic sauce is in the editing. What was the name of YouTube channel? Uh, your YouTube channel, Zyber? Um, it's uh, NTT four two six. Dude, sounds like a sounds like a phone number. <laughs> what? Could just call one eight hundred NTT four two six, and you'll get <laughs> yeah. And would wait. There's more. We'll give you a free uh, thing. You free entertainment. <laughs> Maybe. Good improv there. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of anything. I, I'm like desperately looking around my room. What can we give them? A free uh, a vacuum free cleaner. Wonder Woman lunchbox. A free okay. chocolate orange. Ooh, that's good. I like that's chocolate delicious. oranges. Yeah, I got one for Christmas. Haven't eaten it yet. How big is it? The size of an orange. Well... What kind of orange? Is it like a GMO orange or like? We're talking a... like a mandarin orange, or is it like um, a grapefruit? It's which a bit is not bigger orange, than mandarin, but... much smaller than grapefruit. <laughs> okay. When was the last time you saw a grapefruit-sized orange? Um, it was they, a large orange, different? and it was the same size as a small grapefruit. Whoa, I am having a hard time picturing that in my head. Think of the dead space between orange and grapefruit. It was right there. Speaking of Dead Space, I went on a uh, video game shopping spree, uh, and Dead Space actually was one of the games that I bought. 
along with uh, like a bunch of other ones. I got Mirror's Edge, which Piddle's really happy about. Um, let's see, what else is what else did I get? I got Fable 2, which Silver Slate is really unhappy about. I got my first ever um, Batman game. The, I got the Arkham Asylum, um, which everyone nice. talks up. And I'm like, I'm not into Batman. I'm not really into superheroes in general. Um, it's still pretty good. Is it? Yeah. Really? I, like, cause, yeah I, I mean, it was like 10 bucks, so I couldn't really say no, because it's they said basically it's like Metroid Prime, but with Batman. Um, uh, and I'm not sure how accurate that is, but because um, I know it's not a, I know it's not a first person adventure. Yeah, it's not. But there is backtracking, from what I understand, and I love backtracking. I can see what they they're saying from like an environmental standpoint, uh, not necessarily from a gameplay style standpoint, but uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, you definitely need to play it just because it's not really. People aren't impressed from it from a story standpoint necessarily. It's it's your standard Batman stuff, but the gameplay and the combat system are really really well done. Like I just want to play a good game, right? Like I yeah. don't need to I don't need to play like just because it's Batman. It's not like I'm gonna turn away and be like, ugh, Batman. I just want to play good games, right? And that's what I've been into more than anything lately. I just want to play the good stuff. Um, yeah. So that's why I picked that up. And uh, as Nintendo fans, we're not necessarily finding story driven experiences we're looking for good gameplay mostly yeah so, so you'll find it there rpgs yeah and I, I actually have been playing a lot of rpgs lately like I, today i was faced with a choice i'm like well do i want to play earthbound or do i want to play pokemon or do i want to start a game that i haven't already like kind of gone with and i was thinking oh maybe fire emblem awakening is the the next one i'm gonna do but then i was like you know those are all three rpgs i've been playing a lot of rpgs lately and I don't really know why. Maybe it's, it's just because so it, many of them. Maybe it's because it's the winter and like I'm inside a lot and I just have a lot of time um, to just kind of sit around and, and play stuff. But that kind of uh, those kind of hours lend itself lend, lend themselves better to RPGs, I think. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if I'm gonna plop down, you know, RPGs are like 30, 40 hours. If I'm gonna plop down that much time, I can do like five hours in one sitting, just sitting here in my chair making qj do all the cleaning while i play earthbound <laughs> great <laughs> yeah well she she recently played portal though didn't she she got it for she Christmas. did play portal actually i have a little bit of an announcement to make um qj my wife has uh has not been a, uh, much of a gamer her entire life when she married me she inherited hundreds of games um so it it kind of came naturally that she became interested in kind of playing some of them um, and I actually didn't own Portal. Portal was a gift from uh, the IGN Zelda board's own Legend of Midna. Um, he gifted that to her for Christmas because he thought she would like it, and uh, she did play it through. Play it through, and uh, she actually loved it. And uh, the news is that she's going to be writing a piece about it for the ZB.net, um, which is our website, of course. Uh, and if you want, if you're interested in reading that, that should be coming out at some point in the next couple of weeks, possibly days, depending on when you're listening to this. So keep an eye out for a uh, noob gamer's perspective on Portal. If you're it might in already be out, uh, depending on when you're listening Maybe. to this. Maybe. If you're listening to this in 2016, I guarantee you it's out. Um, so <laughs> Hopefully. I don't know why you'd be listening to this in 2000. I, well, I don't know why you'd be listening to this ever, but there you go. We do have like 40-something subscribers. so We have high self-esteem here on the ZB net. I mean, you know, when you're throwing New Year's Eve parties that one person comes to and stays for an hour, it's sort of, it's sort of to be expected that my, you know, I'm going to be a little uh, self-loathing. Yeah, well, <sighs> there's that. I have to play a lot of games. Uh, as you might know by now, my actual game collection is rather wimpy compared to the likes of Spiegel here. Can I interrupt um, one more time, actually? Yeah. Go for we it. are we are working on a feature to um, get profiles for everybody on the ZB.net, and on those profiles will be uh, snapshots, not snapshots, but like uh, lists of our game collection, so you can kind of watch them grow as we grow as gamers. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just a little side feature that I wanted to, I wanted to do for a while, and mostly just a way to show off um, my massive ego in the numbers of games that I've collected <laughs> over the years. Yeah, okay, go ahead. There's a lot of features that we're going to be putting into the 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 website this year that i haven't really been able to do because i've been so busy these past months end of the year stuff having to play having to perform at a wedding doing music which is not something i actually do i was asked because it's family um and they well i've grown up playing piano taking piano lessons and things like that so i'm kind of known as the guy who plays piano in the family even though i'm not that good uh 
So. Well, I think you're great. Anyway, about your game collection. Yeah, well, I mean, I still have to beat a lot of the games I bought. I haven't beaten Hyrule Warriors yet. Uh, I only played the first day I, I played Captain Toad, and then I haven't touched it since. Man, I don't know if I I don't I can't call myself a gamer at this point. Like I I know you said jokingly you're not even a gamer, but I'm I'm starting to believe I might not be at this point. Like I'm so analytical about games, but can you be? A gamer just from an analytical standpoint you have to experience them i I mean i experience them uh sort of vicariously through let's players a lot but it's not the same i don't don't know know. i felt that way about three years ago where i rarely played games and i was all like well how can i not be a gamer i'm so interested in all this stuff yeah that's the thing and then i got a job (laughs) oh yeah I think if you like games and you appreciate like what they are like as an art form, which you obviously do, I think you can call yourself a gamer. I think that's fair. Like we've had discussions about like if someone who just plays Angry Birds, like are they considered a gamer? And I wasn't really sure how to answer that question until recently. And then I started thinking about, well, they're playing a game. They like the game for what it is. Uh, and the fact is, you know, even if it's a crappy game or if it's, you know, or even if it's a simple game like Angry Birds, it's still a game. And that's what they're choosing to do with their time. Um, they're not a hardcore gamer because a hardcore gamer is willing to dedicate lots of time to playing lots of different things. I think that can't really be argued. But as for what it takes to be a gamer, I think you just have to have an interest in the medium. And I think you have to um, appreciate what it is and enjoy doing it. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know if I can call myself a hardcore gamer anymore, um, or if I ever was one, because I'm I like kind of more casual experiences like that Nintendo what? offers. A lot of their like games Captain are Toad and casual. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you could say that a lot of Nintendo's games are marginally more casual than what other companies are making, just from a I don't, maybe not. I mean, from a story standpoint, they're lighter, but the gameplay is always polished and things like that. So I don't know if you can really say they're more casual, but a lot of people like calling Nintendo games casual compared to things like Assassin's Creed or or Halo. Um, I don't know if that's really that holds any water, but so if your game is a glitchy mess, it's a hardcore game, <laughs> and if you're oh whoa Assassin's Creed Unity shots fired, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. But that, that's I don't know. I agree with you. Like that's that's always what I liked about Nintendo is that it managed to be simple yet accessible for everybody at the same time. Like I have just as much fun playing a game like Captain Toad as I do playing a hardcore game, a, a quote unquote uh, hardcore game like Fallout Three. It's I mean not the same amount of fun because I, I like Fallout Three better. But the point they deliver they both deliver fun, satisfying experiences for what they are. Yeah. So. I don't know, that's me, and it sounds like it's you too. Well, I mean, I'm setting out to try to become a video game developer, so <laughs> I hope I'm, I'm some semblance of a gamer. Okay, if you're a game developer, you're a gamer, okay? Like, the, you, can't, you can't just say that you're not. I don't know, man. Some developers have spend so much time making them that they don't even get to play them, which is probably detrimental to their ability to make them, but uh, it happens. I mean, Miyamoto doesn't get to play that many games other than the ones he makes i'm sure some people be all like oh my gosh just playing the same game over and over again yeah that's horrible yeah Yeah. that reminds me of the um you remember like during e3 when they were like showing off the bayonetta 2 demo or whatever it was and they had that woman there who was like demoing the game and the director was like yeah she played the game so much that she actually like injured her hand so she's like not playing it that well right now i'm like dang that's some dedication right there you know, and, and how Sakurai had that, like, wrist thing with Smash Brothers. That's probably why my wrists are so horrible. Oh, yeah, he has, like, tendonitis or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I think he still has it, actually. Uh, I recently read crazy. an interview um, of Sakurai's, and uh, he kind of bashed the competitive scene a bit again, which didn't make the Smash community very happy. Nobody um, cares about the Smash community. They bought the game. That, that part is over. They're not gonna stop playing. They're not gonna stop playing <laughs> Smash Brothers Melee because Sakurai said they were stupid. Like I, I don't know how to feel about the Smash community. Um, like right after E three, I stopped going to the Smash boards just because I knew it was going to get heated, and I didn't really want to be around the Smash boards because I didn't want everything to get spoiled and things like that. 
But uh-huh. the more I go back and read what they're saying, like so many people are, are don't like Smash Four, and then for certain reasons, and then some people think it's the greatest thing ever. Uh, and and there's such a large community of really competitive players, who like bash Sakurai because of his decision making, and I'm thinking like, wait a minute, do you really think that he should pander to an audience that? is contrary to the creator's vision like are you are you saying that he's less than what he should be because of that reason and not to mention a very niche market too like you say there's a large community but it's not as large as the amount of people who bought the game i'll tell you that right yeah that's true but like people who say that sakurai makes bad decisions because he doesn't you know make a game that has a higher capacity for a competitive player things like that I don't understand when how they can actually he have never that. makes these games for that purpose. Right. Yeah, that's like, never been the purpose. Like, if you played the original Smash Bros., that game was crazy. Oh, yeah. Certainly. That game was barely skill-based, you know, if you're if you're comparing it to Melee. Yeah, and the only I, reason Melee was skill-based was because of all the glitches in it. Right. Well, let's not call them glitches. They're exploits. They're, they're, game, te- they're game techniques. The only hardcore there are things pro that players weren't supposed to be used for such a purpose, right? But I mean, they're still within the realm, like within the bounds of what the game's physics behavior is supposed to be. But I'm not going to open that can of worms because, I mean, I understand that. I think the uh, competitive scene for melee is completely legitimate, and Sakurai has has said that he wanted melee to kind of be a more competitive version. Uh, in light of the fact that there are other fighting games out there that are very competitive. So going from the 64 to the GameCube, he wanted to make something that might be more competitive. But I I wonder if he regrets it. Like, I think he back. regrets it in the sense that... like no, He doesn't regret like making the game, but I think he probably regrets it in the sense that... like Here you have this game that's now like 13 years old, and it's just... It's the standard, still for basically any competitive fighting game at this point that's not like, you know, a Mortal Kombat or something like that. Any any four-player fighting game, like you get games like PlayStation All-Stars that are compared to it. And it's like, you've you've made a monster that's too big for anything to overcome, no matter how many trophies you add, no matter how many songs are in the game, no matter how many characters there are, it's not going to be possible to recapture that original magic because that's what it is. It's the original, you know? Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, and I think I think um, that's why Nintendo didn't go all out in making Mario Kart Eight this like amazing game because they know they're gonna have to top it again. Well, that's the thing is like if you if you try to stuff one game with all of the good ideas that you ever have, it's never gonna get finished. Like people always uh, bash any given game because it's not everything that it could be. Like this Zelda game doesn't realize all of the potential that the Zelda franchise has. And I always think, no game is ever going to do that. Like, they have to limit themselves because that's just the way game development works. There's a scope, there's limitations, and limitations right. lead to design decisions that are often good design decisions um, due to those limitations. I'd rather the game come out now than never. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that... I need to stop reading comments. I, I tell myself that I, I shouldn't read comments, but I always go through and try to correct people and speaking, educate them. Speaking of comments, if you'd like us to correct and educate you, why don't you go ahead and leave a comment on this video as well as liking and subscribing to our channel? If they want us to, to correct and educate them, just why would they if, want that? <laughs> just in general, if you no, want... No, if you any... want to correct and educate us, well, that works you too. should comment. But also, if you have a stupid statement that you feel needs correcting... Um, just go ahead and post it, and we will correct it for you. Oh well, yeah. If you have a if you have an itch that needs to be scratched like that, then yeah, I'll scratch that. That's kind of creepy. Okay, um, <laughs> I'll scratch your itches for you if you need. It, just subscribe to us, please. I'll do anything. I'll even scratch your itches. As long as you scratch my back afterwards. Yes, please. We'll make a community of back scratchers. Let's That's rename a, the website, guys. We're going to change uh, our URL to backscratchers.us. Didn't you know that, uh, the, that the, the B in ZB stands for backscratchers? Yeah, Zelda backscratchers. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
the zb.net is our website if you want to go ahead and check that out this is another plug for that uh, as i'm cer- i'm doing that thing i said earlier where i was like searching around the room for something to talk about <laughs> are you, just, wait, like, why are you I'm giving them the another room. plug it's not like they can tune in now they're not going to start in the middle of the podcast well this maybe is... if they missed the plug earlier they they're hearing it now <laughs> sure um, okay yeah yeah whatever so uh so i need a new hat and uh oh no I've, what's that yeah. why like because i don't know i've been wearing the same like you remember that the the hat that you used for my drawing on the zb.net um that twins but hat? i never added the logo you never yeah. added the logo well we, i was afraid of copyright issues um more like legend of midna was afraid of copyright issues oh yeah he's like they'll sue you for using that like yeah on a website that 40 people visit every day the the minnesota twins are going to come after me but anyway i've been wearing that same hat for like a year and a half now and it's just like old and ratty and it's like really ugly now and i just don't want to wear it anymore because i hate the twins because they suck and um i just need a new hat and i'm looking for a new look uh for a while i wore like a, a fedora which just made me look like a moron <laughs> was it really a fedora I, yeah it was really what was that Zyber? i just realized what your skype picture is what is it I, i'm not even looking at it so you're holding a marker to your eye just like omni's picture oh yeah yeah uh i was i was trying to do the same thing you're i only your glasses i only recently learned that people often mistake a fedora for a different hat which is called a trilby um i didn't know that i I thought now now i have to look now i have to look this up to see what the difference is because maybe i am mistaking it oh there's even like the first thing on the search is trilby versus fedora (laughs) you know what this it might be a trilby it's so it's so close should we show people an image of trilby versus fedora so that they can be edumacated yeah go ahead and timestamp this okay yeah so here's, we'll put a, we'll put here's a picture that there. thing. Here's that thing that we just put up. That we definitely okay, put up. It's right there. Right I'm gonna, there. I'm gonna forget. It's gonna be super awkward. <laughs> it's gonna no, be I'll so remind funny. You. No, well, yeah, you'll remind me, but I'll still forget somehow. Link in the description, just in case. Yeah, I'll put a link of the fedora in the description. People are really gonna go down there and <laughs> click on that. They don't care. Right. Hey, if you're still listening, God bless you. Okay, because you are a saint, my friend. All, every one of you, all two of you. That are still listening to this. One of them is me. Okay, um, so uh, we could talk about Amiibo. Uh, oh man, no, I, I got, I I got talk two about Amiibo. Amiibo for Christmas, man. Which ones did you get? Uh, yeah, my roommate got me a Donkey Kong and a Pikachu. Nice. Which I think is good because those are two of the better looking ones. Oh, Pikachu is so awesome in Smash Bros. Too. Oh the yeah, Amiibo. I hate him. I hate. Him. I hate Pikachu. <laughs> also, I, I finally Pikachu got Pikachu players. I finally got my Captain Falcon, so as of now, I am the proud owner of every Amiibo that has been released as nice. of this moment, although I still have not managed to get my hands on a Rosalina pre-order, and oh, uh, I do. I've now gone to the lengths of getting my friends from other countries to pre-order Amiibos for me, because um, <laughs> as we all oh, know, no. Lucario is sold out in Toys R Us, right, in America, but, or it was until recently anyway. But in the UK, they don't have store exclusivity, so they still have Lucario available over there. So I'm like, oh, hey, Mr. Chris, can you just go ahead and reserve a Lucario Amiibo for me? And I'll just uh, pay you back for it later. Nice. So uh, On that, I have good news. Okay. My friend found out that GameStop was selling the adapters for the GameCubes online, so he ordered one and should be here around Monday or so. That is correct. Nice. As, actually, as a GameStop employee, and I have a, I have a couple stories I could tell, actually, uh, maybe for a different show. Because uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't really think of them off the top of my head, but I know I have some. Um, they are back in stock as of tomorrow, uh, which is the second. So if you're listening to this show, um, you may be able to go check a GameStop for that elusive GameCube controller adapter. Yeah, the only issue for him was that it had to be forced with a bundle of two GameCube controllers. So he got for like 115 or like $105 with shipping and handling. Holy crap, man. Oh, man. Yeah. I was that all like... I'm glad you didn't tell me that, because I would never use that much money. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I actually have two. Like, I, I got two what? that little adapter? fiasco adapter? Oh, that's where right, Amazon yeah. didn't fulfill my, my pre-order as it should have, so I got it somewhere just, else, but then I didn't cancel the pre-order give me on one Amazon. of those. So, so you, yeah. have your, you have two GameCube adapters? Yeah. Why don't you just, just go ahead and... You should go and sell one. You could probably make some money off that. Maybe. Or give it to me. Um, I was... 
I was thinking maybe I should keep it just in case there was ever a situation where somebody wanted to bring their four GameCube controllers to think we'd do eight eight player Smash with it. Does it support eight play? Uh, does it support like? Yeah. Um, I thought the console only did four GameCube controllers at once. I thought that was what it was nope. designed for. Huh. Nope. You can plug one into the front and back, oh. and then all eight will be recognized. Wow. Well. Well, Isn't that lovely? So yeah, we educate people on this podcast. If you didn't you know just, that, you just educated me, and we'll we'll educate you in your comments too. Yeah, eventually. there you go. We do good things here. You know we, what? Another good. We you know donate to charity. Thing? We don't actually, though. At least not well, as a, not as a company or anything. <laughs> yeah. The, the ZB.net Corporation doesn't give to any charities right now because we don't make enough money. Um, also, it doesn't exist. Not yet. <laughs> hey, this is a big year for the ZB.net. You never know what we're going to do. Yeah, maybe. Um, Hoping to drive traffic with uh, the comic, and I'm going to try to plug the ZBN as much as possible on my YouTube channel as well. So Yeah, if you guys have seen the website lately, we've got a lot of articles up right now. We've been trying to do at least one a day for like the last week and a half. We've actually been able to do it. Um, One of the articles I posted was uh, the ZB in 2015, and uh, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. The comic is one. I'm going to make videos with Piddle. A bunch of guest writers are going to do content. We're going to have podcasts all the time like we do. Um, Lots and lots of stuff. So if you're interested in games at all, Uh, It's not even going to be just Nintendo anymore because we've got people writing for PC games. QJ's doing her portal thing. That's a PC game. I should really finish mine. Your what? Oh, your article? Yeah. Yeah, Zyber started writing an article in like November that he hasn't finished yet. Uh, Same thing with you, Hex. You've got an article about the Sonic games. Oh, yeah. Man, Um, I can make people angry. Well, if... Or rather uh, make people nod their head. Let's get some cl- let's get some clickbait going. We need that article to be clickbait. Yeah, you know no, we can why? Do, I, can, I can make that happen. Why the Sonic franchise is the worst franchise in the history of gaming? Oh, okay, whoa, hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, if you did though, well, you need to. I should, yeah, shouldn't I? You do need yeah. to. The worst though, I don't even believe that. What would you say the worst franchise is in the history of gaming? Franchise, man, like. A franchise that actually became a franchise because they yeah. serialized it. Like that was still that terrible. had numbers. Like it had a number of games, like more than two, let's say. Um, I think I know my answer. What's your answer? I think I'm gonna go with uh, Bubsy. Oh, oh man! You know Bubsy, uh, oh, yeah, Atari yeah. Jaguar. I think had a game, and then there was Bubsy 3D on PS1, which was like a horrible version of Super Mario 64. Yeah, I'm familiar with it because of John Tron. John Tron did a, a video on that. I've been watching uh, a lot no, of uh, Game Grumps, John Tron, Markiplier stuff. Plugs for other channels. <laughs> yeah, Bubsy is is a is an atrocity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. It's just an atrocity. It's bad. Look up a look up a let's play of Bubsy 3D if you have never seen the game before. It's not good. Um, what else is there? I can't think of like an actual I mean, franchise because all of the really terrible games I could think of were so terrible that they never got continued. Uh, for what it's worth, Spyro had like one good game, and then that was it for that. Well, what? I'm sure yeah. someone would argue with you. The first three are amazing. The PS1 uh, Spyro games are amazing. I only really cared for the first one. I don't know, man. No, they're all amazing. I probably amazing. didn't play enough of the... So have okay, you even played just... the second and third one? Yeah, I played them. I just didn't... I don't know. I didn't get into them as much as the first one for some reason. They're better than the first one. Uh... You know, you know, I would say that out of like the high-profile franchises that still exist today, Sonic is probably the worst. Like, he has such a legacy. He has a heritage that is rather illustri- illustrious, but... He's doing terribly now, and I don't know why they keep, like, do they make money with Sonic games still? I mean, if we look at, let's take a look at the sales. Let's let's make this the last topic of the podcast, some good old-fashioned Sonic bashing to end the show. I know little kids are still huge into the buying their toys and such, not really their games. Yeah, I mean, merchandising, I'm sure, is huge. I mean, um, they're, they are marketed so well. I mean, yeah, they, they have true. a TV show, for one thing. The TV show is going to, I mean... But... Sonic Boom, the TV show. I watched more of it. Uh, why did I do that? Like, you cannot possibly make a more mundane television show than that. Like, they took what was, like, 
used to be exciting and actually had like a deep story in Sonic X. Like those characters had like progression and growth and things like that. And I, I thought, man, this is too dark for a Sonic for the Sonic franchise. Uh, in general, I think the Sonic franchise took a dark turn uh, in like the GameCube era with Shadow um, the Hedgehog. Well, just like they tried to make these deep storylines and like on Earth yeah. with humans and destroying like half oh, of the moon so- and stuff Sonic like that. Sonic 06 was such a mess. Yeah, and time traveling and yeah. ancient evils and st- I don't I don't know. Oh, by do. the way, by the way, this is interesting. What would you say the number one selling Sonic game of all time is? I'm looking at of the numbers. Of all time? Yeah, of all Sonic time. Sonic 1? No, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. From really? Yeah, 8 million copies. Is that the first more one? More than Sonic 1. Sonic 2 actually sold more than Sonic 1. It's, it's Sonic 2 sold 6 million. And Sonic 1, that it looks like, did 4.3 4. 4. 3 million. Um, okay, and moving on. Uh, recent Sonic sales, uh, like legitimate Sonic games, um, not like Olympic games. Sonic Heroes did 3 million on PS2. Um, Sonic and the Secret Rings on Wii in 2007 did 2.68. Uh, Sonic Unleashed on Wii did 2.1. I'm talking millions. Um, after that, sales drop off. Sonic Colors on Wii did 1.6. Uh, let's see. Going down, going down. I'm on the list. Sonic 06 did over 1 million copies on PS3. Hmm. That is, yeah. So, Sonic Generations on PS3 did 1.4. I don't know if this is interesting to people, but the point is that Sonic is still selling very well, which is kind of an embarrassment. Although Sonic Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric has not yet done 100,000 units, so there may still be hope. Well, I, I know that like younger kids, they don't see like they can see past those flaws that those games have. So I can understand why there are people growing up and actually have some endearment to I these mean, newer games. Like I was watching some comments on like the Facebook page for Sonic Boom. And people are like, yeah, I loved that that episode, or this episode was great. And I'm like, who could possibly think that of any of these episodes? So, I mean, there's definitely still an audience that is growing to know Sonic. Right. But it just makes me sad that they, they have no idea where Sonic has been in the past and how much better it was. I mean, you could argue, there's a lot of people who say that there are no good Sonic games and that Sonic has always been kind of an inferior franchise compared to, like, Mario but it's definitely been higher than where it is now. Uh, I don't think they no could go question. any lower. No question. But, I mean, Sonic Boom is very clearly uh, targeted towards younger kids based on how simple the game is and the, the design there and how dumb and silly the dialogue, the dialogue in yeah. the show and the game is and how handholdy it is the whole time. Like you, you basically accomplish the task that you were supposed to do before they can tell you how to do it. Right. <laughs> well, it is 2015, and uh, since Sonic is now annualized, I assume we'll be seeing another Sonic game this year, so they get another chance to get it right. And I really hope they do. Like, I'm not rooting against the franchise. Oh, it's yeah. Just... Yeah, we've said that before. Yeah. I'm um, sure we'll see something at E3. Hopefully not in the Sonic Boom franchise, because that's just a train that's already off the tracks that's rolling down a hill towards a pit of lava in a volcano. And it's erupting. Yeah, and, and the and volcano there's... is currently erupting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's it. That's it. We can't do this anymore. We've gone. We've gone a little long. I mean, we always go long, but we've gone about as long as I've. Uh, I said we would. So we're gonna wrap this up. Anyone have any final thoughts so before we move forward into 2015? Uh, this is gonna be the best year ever, by the way. The best year in the history of the world. Uh, <laughs> because this is the year that the ZB is finally gonna take off. The ZB.net, of course. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm uh I'm hoping that this year will be more productive. Um, and if anybody has uh, has any tips on like how to work smart or anything like that, definitely feel free to share them with me at least. Uh, cause I like getting stuff done, and I want to get lots of stuff done this year. So, do you use a planner? Years to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am definitely doing that. Um, I've got like seven. Ca- I've life. got like seven calendars in my house. <laughs> All of them have different things on it. So many people using each other. Which, which calendar do I want to use today? Do I want to use the one in my bedroom? <laughs> that yeah. one has a, a lunch date with so and so, but the one in the kitchen has uh, me going to uh, the Hobbit tonight. Which one should I do? 
the hobby. Anyway, are you, yeah, are you implying that I have a social life that I actually like write down social things on my calendar? <laughs> no, you know what my calendar it says? It's like my calendar says uh, January third, play Pokemon for two hours, uh, Jan- <laughs> <laughs> and then play play Earthbound well, for two hours. I'm not even you joking. Schedule this. your game. I do. Well, I really do. I am such a loser. Okay, that is enough. I've had enough self pity in this show. Like I said before. Uh, if you guys like our show, if you want to hear more, if, especially if you want to hear more shows like this, because I've had a lot of fun. Um, I hope these guys did too. Uh, if you want to hear more shows like this, let us know that you like the show by by liking it, um, by leaving comments, subscribe to our channel, share us with your friends. Although this may not want to, you may not want to share this episode with your friends because they'd be like, "What's going on? What what is wrong with these people?" <laughs> That's but, every episode. Um, yeah. And and visit our visit the zb.net. Check out uh, Zybers and Hexus YouTube channels if you want to go ahead and plug those one more time, guys. RT Omni and TT four two six. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> you seem very hesitant to, to plug your channel because he didn't want to do so, the phone number. Th- it's so crappy. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty crap. One day we'll figure out or we'll find out uh, where you got that horrible, horrible name from. Um, but uh, but for now, that'll do it for this show. We'll see you later in 2015. We're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse comes out next month, so Ooh. we're all very excited for that. Um, we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about. Sure. So, this was the ZBN Podcast, the first episode of 2015. Thank you, everybody, for listening. For Hex and Zyber, this is Spiegel signing off. Thanks again, guys. <laughs>